hello friends so in this lecture we will discuss about the refrigeration in the thermodynamics engineering thermodynamics third semester we studied about the second law of thermodynamics and the application of second law of thermodynamics is refrigeration and air conditioning refrigeration is defined as the process of producing and maintaining a temperature below that of surrounding almost in all the homes today uh, we have the refrigerator uh, we use the refrigerator for preserving the food or vegetables or some of the medicines and so on so inside the refrigerator the compartment food compartment or the refrigerator we find the temperature is lower than the surrounding temperature the technology used for producing and maintaining a temperature below the surrounding is called as refrigeration so what we do actually in the refrigerator refrigeration is means continuous extraction of heat from a low temperature body with the external work input once again you take your the refrigerator to your home the refrigerator is connected with the electric energy so we are supplying electric energy to the refrigerator so that is what the external work input so when you put something inside your refrigerator so that is the heat load load to the refrigerator so what the refrigerator is doing it is removing the heat energy from the low temperature refrigerator food compartment and supplying the heat energy to a to the high temperature atmosphere so refrigeration means continuous extraction of heat from a low temperature body that is your food compartment and with the help of the external work input so in the refrigeration one important term is turn off refrigeration uh the refrigerator actually it is specified by turn off refrigeration or even the when you purchase air conditioner uh, we call we specify the air conditioner by 1 ton refri 1 ton ac or 1.5 ton ac 2 ton ac like that so turn off refrigeration is important terminology in the refrigeration refrigeration so the turn off refrigeration is defined as the refrigeration effect produced by melting 1 ton of ice from and at 0 degrees celsius in 24 hours uh, we can put it in simple term the amount of heat extracted for the formation of 1 ton of ice at 0 degrees celsius in 24 hours that is what called as 1 ton of refrigeration the amount of heat to be removed from water at 0 degrees celsius to produce 1 ton of ice in 24 hours is the turn off refrigeration otherwise the amount of heat required to melt 1 ton of ice at 0 degrees celsius in 24 hours that is what the turn off refrigeration uh, in fact they are 1 ton of refrigeration equal to 3.5 kJ per second or 210 kJ per minute another terminology in the refrigeration technology is coefficient of performance as if the cop you, do, you you are familiar we, we we discuss in the second law of thermodynamics cop cop equal to refrigeration effect divided by the work input that is the amount of actual amount of heat extracted in the refrigerator divided by work input q divided by w there is another terminology relative cop which is actual cop divided by theoretical cop so theoretical cop is calculated from the refrigeration cycle the actual cop is the cop of the uh, machine refrigerator machine working practically and there are three different types of refrigeration air refrigeration system vapor compression refrigeration system and vapor absorption refrigeration system so in this uh, lecture uh, we discuss one by one first air refrigeration system so here we use the reversed carnot cycle a uh, carnot cycle again we discussed earlier in thermodynamics so the reversed carnot cycle is used for uh, the refrigeration purpose so 1 to 2 is the iso uh, isentropic expansion that is work done on the system 
2 to 3 is the isothermal expansion and 3 to 4 is the reversible adiabatic that is isentropic compression and 4 to 1 is the isothermal compression. The corresponding temperature entropy diagram 1 to 2 isentropic process, 2 to 3 constant temperature process, 3 to 4 isentropic process, 4 to 1 again constant temperature process. And the here the heat absorbed from the cold body. So, this is the cold body. 2 to 3 is the amount of heat extracted from a cold body which is temperature T2 into S3 minus S2. And the heat rejected to a hot body that is T1 higher the amount of heat rejected T1 into S4 minus S1. So, looking at the diagram S3 equal to S4, S1 equal to S2. So, this is T1 into S3 minus S2. So, in a cyclic process net heat transfer equal to net work done. So, net work done equal to heat rejected minus heat absorbed. So, W equal to T1 into S3 minus S2 minus T2 into S3 minus S2 which is T1 minus T2 into S3 minus S2. So, now the COP equal to heat absorbed in the cold body divided by work done. So, substituting for heat absorbed and the work done, you will get T2 by T1 minus T2. This is the COP of reversed Carnot cycle. T2 is the lower temperature at which heat is absorbed by the refrigerant and T1 minus T2 is the temperature difference in the refrigerator. And uh, reversed Carnot cycle, the Carnot cycle is not practicable. Uh, so, we are going for, we are using the bell column and cycle. So, bell column and cycle is a reversed Barreton cycle. Barreton cycle, it was discussed in the gas turbine cycle. Uh, it is used for, Barreton cycle is used for the gas turbines and the reversed Barreton cycle, it is what bell column and cycle used for uh, producing the refrigeration. So, here 1 to 2 is expander, isentropic expansion, 2 to 3 is the heat absorption. So, this is what your uh, refrigerator. So, it uh, the fluid which is circulated inside, the air which is circulated inside the coil, it absorbs the heat energy from the refrigerator and this vapor uh, goes to the compressor. So, it is compressed here, pressure is increased, then it goes to the air cooler. So, here it is cooled by cold water, the air, the fluid, right, it is cooled by the water, the cold air, it is again goes to the expander, expanded and recirculated. So, this is what the bell column and cycle. And the corresponding pressure volume and the temperature interrupt diagram. So, 1 to 2 is isentropic expansion, 2 to 3 is constant pressure heat addition, 3 to 4 is the isentropic compression and 4 to 1 is constant pressure heat rejection and the corresponding temperature entropy diagram. And uh, once again calculating the COP, amount of heat excited by the work done. Uh, substituting the values, so we will get 1 by R to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1, where R is the pressure ratio of the refrigerator, so which is P1 by P2. So, P1 is the pressure at the outlet of the compressor and P2 is the pressure at the inlet of the compressor, right. Then the advantages of air refrigeration, the refrigerant used is air, it is non-poisonous, it is cheap and easily available. The system is highly reliable. The system is useful for aircraft refrigeration due to its light weight and less space requirement. The demerits are very low COP. The running cost is very high. Why the running cost is very high? We require bigger equipment for the uh, for producing uh, refrigeration. We require bigger capacity of uh, compressor, bigger capacity of evaporator. So, you require uh, running cost is high. The mass of record, the air record is high, so the capacity of the is also high. So, there is, these are all the disadvantages. So, this is used only for uh, aircraft uh, refrigeration and for other commercial refrigerator or industrial refrigerator, we are not using the air as the working fluid. Other refrigerants are used. So, this is what your refrigerator, household refrigerator. So, this is uh, this is what the food compartment, the compartments. So, this is the freezer. So, inside the uh, refrigerator, inside this equipment, inside we got the evaporator coil. This is the back side of your refrigerator. You find the compressor here and the black color tube. They are the condenser tubes and you have vertical uh, strip of material that is called as fin for heat removal, effective heat removal in the condenser. 
and you have a capillary tube for the expander, expansion device. So, compressor, condenser and the expander, they are here on the outside and the evaporator is inside the food compartment. And this is what the vapor compression refrigeration system, the various components of the vapor compression refrigeration system. The components are evaporator, compressor, condenser, receiver tank and the expansion tank. So, the evaporator, so this is what your food compartment, the vapor enters the evaporator, it absorbs the heat energy, it is completely converted into either dry saturated vapor or superheated vapor, then it goes to the compressor, it is compressed, so by compressing the fluid, further the uh, pressure and temperatures are increased, so it leaves with the higher enthalpy, higher temperature, higher pressure. So, the compressor is handling only the vapor, that is why it is called as vapor compression system. So, perfectly the, the compressor inlet should be a vapor, right? Preferably a dry saturated vapor at the entry of the compressor. Then the high temperature, high pressure vapor goes to the condenser. So, here the conden using the condensation process, the heat is removed and at the end of the condenser, it becomes liquid refrigerant. So, here you will get the liquid at the point 0.4. Then the liquid is stored in the receiver tank at a higher pressure, then it is expanded. So, the expansion valve, it is something like a throttle valve, uh, the expanded to a lower temperature, lower pressure and a lower specific volume. Now, it is entering a evaporator and once again it absorbs heat energy, the fluid is getting circulated. So, this vapor compression system, it is what used in our a regular household refrigerator and the air conditioner. The advantages are comparing with the air refrigerator system, it is of higher COP, operating cost is less, uh, the expander is removed by the expansion valve, the size of the evaporator is smaller comparing with the air refrigerator system uh, because we are using uh, vapor, vapor of uh, freon, vapor of uh, ammonia, vapor of CO2, vapor of sulfur dioxide, SO2, they are used as the refrigerant. So, the property, thermo, thermochemical property of the refrigerant is better, is higher than the air. So, the size of the entire equipment uh, is less, smaller. So, size of the evaporator is smaller comparing with the air refrigerant system. The temperature required in the evaporator can be achieved by simply adjusting the throttle valve. So, here you have the expansion valve, it is something like a throttle valve. Just by regulating the throttle valve, we can uh, we can get the desired condition in the evaporator. The disadvantages are initial cost is high and the, effect, the refrigerant used affect the environment. So, the refrigerant leakage in the, ref, in the refrigerator uh, and the air conditioner is the main reason for the your uh, ozone layer depletion or the global warming. So, these are all the disadvantages of vapor compression refrigeration system. And the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, there are five different cycles. Vapor compression cycle with the dry saturated vapor after compression, vapor compression cycle with the wet vapor after compression, vapor compression cycle with the superheated vapor after compression, vapor compression cycle with the superheated vapor before compression, and vapor compression cycle with the under cooling. So, there are five different possibilities, five different cycles, simple cycles. Uh, in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So, we will see one by one. So, the first cycle is vapor compression cycle with the dry saturated vapor after compression. So, this is what the layout of layout diagram, what we discussed earlier, evaporator, compressor, condenser and the expansion valve. 1 to 2 is evaporation process, 2 to 3 is the isentropic compression process, 3 to 4 is the condensation process and 4 to 1 is the constant enthalpy throttling process. In the corresponding temperature entropy, pressure enthalpy diagram. What is the condition here? With the dry saturated vapor after compression. So, the compression process is 2 to 3. So, at the end of the compression, it is dry saturated vapor. 0.3, it is on the saturated vapor. So, the, in the temperature entropy diagram, so, this line is saturated liquid line and this line is saturated vapor line. So, anywhere on the saturated liquid line, it is liquid. The fluid is liquid and on this line, anywhere on this line, it is vapor, dry saturated vapor. 
So the condition here is dry saturated vapor after compression. 0.3 is on the vapor line. And condensation. So necessarily at the end of the condensation, uh, you will get the saturated liquid. So 3 to 4 is the condensation process. And uh, 2 to 3 is isentropic compression. So when I get the 3, you have to draw a vertical line. And 2 is the compression, beginning of the compression. So 2 to 3 is isentropic compression. And the 4 to 1 is expansion. So here, look at the other side. So H24 equal to H1. You will get a vertical line here in the pressure enthalpy diagram. So the 1 to 2 is constant pressure and constant temperature process. 2 to 3 is isentropic process where the pressure and the enthalpy are increasing. 3 to 4 is constant temperature and constant pressure process. And the 4 to 1 is constant enthalpy process. So H4 equal to H1. Now, what is the COP? COP equal to heat extracted divided by the work done. The heat is extracted in the evaporator. So between point 1 and 2. So the heat extracted equal to H2 minus H1. The work done, work is given to the machine through the compressor. So here work done equal to H3 minus H2 per unit mass of refrigerant. So H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2 equal to H2 minus H4 because H1 equal to H4. Referring to the diagram, H1 equal to H4. So divided by H3 minus this is what the COP. So in the cycle, what do you have to calculate? COP you have to calculate. Heat extracted equal to H2 minus H1 into mass of the refrigerant. And the work done or the power of the compressor equal to H3 minus H2 into mass of the refrigerant. So you have to calculate amount of heat absorbed in the evaporator, amount of heat rejected in the condenser, amount of work given in the compressor. So three parameters you have to calculate. And the second cycle is vapor compression cycle with wet vapor after compression. So look at the diagram, the same, di same diagram uh, we are using. So what is the change you observe? So in the temperature entropy diagram and pressure enthalpy diagram, there is no change in the point of 4 or 1 and there is change in the 3 and 2. So 3, here it is wet vapor after compression. So 3 is in the wet region. So between saturated liquid and the saturated vapor, so this is wet vapor, the point 3 is on the wet vapor region. So the compression per necessarily a vertical line, isentropic compression. So 2 to 3 is vertical line. So 2 is also in the wet region. So the compressor is handling wet vapor. Practically, uh, we, we have to avoid this because the compressor should handle only the uh, dry saturated vapor. If it is handling wet vapor, so the uh, liquid particle of the refrigerant will damage the compressor. So this operation, this design is normally not recommended. But anyhow, for the academic point of view, we'll discuss wet vapor after compression. And uh, other the, the, everything is very much similar. 1 to 2 is evaporation, 2 to 3 is compression, 3 to 4 is uh, expansion and 4 to 1, uh, 3 to 4 is condensation and 4 to 1 is expansion and COP equation is very much similar. So this is the refrigeration effect, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 is the compressor, work done. So you have to calculate COP H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2 or H2 minus H4 divided by H3 minus H2. And the second and third cycle is vapor compression uh, cycle with the superheated vapor after compression. And look at the uh, diagram. What is the change you observe? 1 to 2, 2 to 3. 3 is in the superheated region beyond the saturated vapor line. So this is superheated vapor line. So 3 is on the superheated region. So this is superheated vapor after compression. And the 4, there is no change. Saturated liquid, 1, there is no change. And 2 is also in the wet vapor. The corresponding pressure enthalpy diagram. And uh, everything is similar. Everything is very much similar to the previous uh, cycles. But the only difference is the point 3 is on the superheated region. So we have to calculate the property carefully. So H3 value you have to calculate carefully. And the evaporation process, 1 to 2 evaporation process, 2 to 3 isentropic compression process, 3 to 4 condensation process, 4 to 1 constant enthalpy throttling process. There is no change in any of these conditions and there is no change in the COP equation also. So H2, H2 is in the wet region, H3 is in the superheated region, H4 is in the saturated liquid line 
and H1 is in the wet region, H2, H4 equal to H1. So, COP equal to H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2, which is also equal to H2 minus H4 divided by H3 minus H2. And uh, vapor compression cycle with the superheated vapor before compression. So, if you look at the compressor here, 2 and 3 both are in the superheated region. That means 2 is superheated vapor, 3 is also superheated vapor. That is what the change. So, the superheated vapor is entering the compressor, it is getting compressed and uh, the superheated vapor is leaving the compressor. So, it is expand, it is condensed to the 4 and then expanded. Once again, it is evaporated. So, the cooled uh, heat is absorbed by the refrigerant, it is evaporated. So, 1 to 2 is evaporation and 2 to 3 is isentropic compression, 3 to 4 is condensation and 4 to 1 is constant enthalpy throttling process. So, 2 and 3 both are in the superheated region and the enthalpy calculation is very much similar. COP equal to heat extracted will be work done equal to H2 minus H1. Uh, H3 minus H2 equal to H2 minus H4 divided by H3 minus H2. And uh, the vapor compression cycle with undercooling. Now look at this. The same layout diagram, but you look at the temperature entropy or pressure enthalpy diagram. Processes are similar, but you have undercooling. What do you mean by undercooling? 4 dash to 4, it is what called as undercooling. So, 1 to 2 evaporation in the evaporator, 2 to 3 is the compression, it is dry saturated vapor is entering the compressor, superheated vapor is leaving the compressor. Now, this is 3 dash to 3 is what superheating. So, the vapor is superheated and it is condensed in the condenser, converted into saturated vapor, then it is condensed into a liquid up to 4 dash. So, 3 dash to 4 dash conversion of liquid vapor into liquid and the liquid further cooled. So, that is what called as undercooling. So, the undercooling is cooling of the refrigerant below its saturation temperature. So, 4 dash is the saturation temperature or the condenser temperature. The 4 is less than the condenser temperature. So, this is what undercooling. T4 dash minus T4, the change in the temperature, it is what called as undercooling. So, this factor we have to take into account while we are solving the problem. So, we discussed five different uh, vapor compression cycles. In all the five different cycles, the COP equation is the same, power input to the compressor is the same, uh, amount of heat extracted in the condenser is the same and amount of the refrigeration effect is also the same. But what is the difference? The location of the various points, enthalpy points, 1, 2, 3, 4 location and calculating the property H1, H2, H3, H4. So, based on the position, based on the process or based on the condition of the vapor uh, before compressor or after compressor or after condenser, so that, uh, that, uh, uh, that based on that we have to calculate the enthalpy of the refrigerant and we have to solve the problem. So, with this we complete and we will discuss the vapor absorption refrigeration in the next lecture.